Hi, it's me, I'm back. Hello, ha ha, it's been a while, ha ha, ha, it's been a month. <clears throat> oh my, welcome, welcome, internet. Um, yeah, that was a wild time being sick. Um, my, my new thing is clearing my throat in a horrific fashion, so I will try not to do that on stream, but um, I don't even know I'm doing it anymore, so I'm sorry. I will try to mute myself. Ugh. Illness is not fun. Hi, Turbo Jerky. It's been a while. It has. <sighs> so we're playing Pentiment. Um, and I bet y'all think, I don't know what's going on, because I never know what's going on in this game, but I do, to the best of my ability. Um, let's see. Hopefully my mic is normal. Let me know if my mic is acting up again, please. <clears throat> see, I did it. That's the, that's the throat clearing thing. <laughs> that's my new thing. Um, it's because I'm drowning in my own sickness. Love it. Um, unfortunately, Aunt couldn't be here tonight. <clears throat> and so we're hoping health for her as well. I feel like the world is trying to keep us from playing Pentiment, but we're not going to listen, world. We're here. We're here to play. I have tea with little D20s on it. How cute. But yes, please let me know if my mic is peaking again. I hope it's... Um, I hope it's behaving itself today. Okay, so I did say I, I knew what was happening, so let me prove it to you. <clears throat> so we, mm, I don't know the buttons so let's be clear on that. Um, we jumped ahead in time. Uh, oh, we're Spanish now. We know Spanish a little bit, so, so that's great. <clears throat> So seven years ahead, um, all of the folks that we knew before are a little bit different. Some of them are dead. Actually, a lot of them are dead. I made a list of all the ones that are dead. Mother Cecilia, dead. Otto's dad, dead. Brother Piero, dead. Which is why we're here, to pay our respects. Um, Brigitte and Martin. The married couple, who's the, uh, Brigitte's the daughter of, of Lucky, the guy who probably killed the, the Baron and we let off on a whim. Their baby, dead. Bert and Marie Drucker, Klaus's family, dead. And you know who didn't come to pay respects or to say anything to any of these people who told him that all these people died? This character right here, Andreas. So the last time we played, I, it was kind of a series of finding out everyone who died. And feeling like an asshole. <laughs> okay, let's start at the beginning here. So Agnes... Um, okay, midwife, wife of Lucky... So she lost a grandchild recently then in Wolf. Anna is the daughter of Ulrich and Gret. I don't know. Did we run into Anna? I don't know. These kids, they were probably little children the last time we were here. 
Brigitta. Yep, married to Martin, that son of a bitch. Clara, second wife of Peter Gertner, mother of Ursula. Klaus? Klaus was real pissed at us. He's raising his daughter alone. <clears throat> Else wife. Oh, Elsa's the Miller's wife. Okay. Uh, she's like a kept woman. Um... Endress, I think, was siding with the peasants the last time we talked to him. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Peasant revolution. Oops. Okay, okay. Ava, daughter of Peter Gertner and his late wife, Christine. Oh, yeah, Ava and Otto got married. She has one son, Otz. Okay, noted. I wish they put these people clustered by family instead of alphabetically. I feel like that would help me a little bit. <clears throat> oh, we did run into Guy last time. So Guy and Father Thomas were scheming a little bit. Um, he did invite me to check out Mother Illuminata's library. <clears throat> Hannah's a new person. The Golden Hand Inn is totally new to town. I believe um, the Miller was kind of shitting on it the last time we talked to him. Johannes Hans Bauer, son of Johann and Hedy Bauer. He's not known for being particularly bright. I don't think we interacted much with Hans. Killian Berger, dutiful son of Nico and Hannah. Okay, so he's new. He's with the new inn. There's Leonard Mueller, the Miller. Total asshole. I don't think he's going to be part of the peasant uprising. There's little odds. Um, okay. I feel like we're... So Martin and Otto seem to be the stars of the show now. Otto being the... He lost his dad. Sorry, Otto. And he is now kind of a revolutionary of sorts. Martin being a farmer. But somehow mixed up in this. I have a note. Um, it says that Otto has a sign from God that the revolution will succeed. Um, and when I ran into them, Otto was asking Martin to just do it, and Martin was worried about crossing the abbot. Oh, there's Paul. Paul loves art, and we have a secret art thing that his dad doesn't know about, and it's great. I'm really suspicious of Father Thomas. Um, so that's our little who's who rundown. I'm interested to visit Mother Illuminata, get some books. Interested to talk to Otto about his weird religious visions. And I'm also interested to know why the abbot is cracking down on people. People can't go to the forest anymore, supposedly. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry for my my uh, illness throat clearing. <laughs> if it gets too bad, I will try to figure out how to mute quickly. Um, forest, 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 forest. Shoot. I don't remember my way around town. This way and down, perhaps? 
Yes. It's probably a faster way. Where the hell is the forest? God damn it. Maybe I have to go back this way. This way and down? able to go to the forest from here? Yes. Okay. Weird. I thought we were already there. Smoky. Oh, they also said they couldn't get into the shrine anymore. I'm not sure if they meant this shrine or the one up by the church. This one doesn't look guarded or anything. All right. What time is it in game? Vesper's meal. We might as well go eat with Otto. I'm kind of interested in his religious visions. It seems like the most interesting meal. not seeing our little meal signs though. Is it not meal time? It says meal hours. All right. Well, let's find Otto regardless. Good old Otto's house. <laughs> oh, what's his name? Otto. Otto Werner. Damn it. As one does. Zimmerman, Zimmerman. Oh, testing. Where are the goddamn Zimmermans? Oh no. Oh, there it is, smack in the middle. Is that north of the square? Or south of the midway? So Endress is siding with the peasants. Steinauer? Zimmerman? Zimmerman? Zimmerman house? How the hell do I get to that Zimmerman house? God damn it. It's like right underneath me. How the hell do I get to the Zimmermans? Aha! It's right here. Oh yeah! This is where we saw Otto out front when we recruited him to dig up that grave. All right, all right. Ava, Otto. Hello. Otto. Andreas. So Otto, sign from God. Oh, right. I found something just a few days ago. This will sound crazy, but I found... I found St. Moritz's head? Just gonna casually write that down. I found St. Moritz's head. So St. Moritz might be the one that whose shrine they're locked out of instead of St. Satya in the forest. What? His head? Are you sure? Shh. 
Yes, I'm sure. All right. Can't say anything more until St. John's Day. Then everyone will know. Who else knows about this? Only those who need to know. And you, of course. Feel like me? Absolutely. Good. Until later, Andreas. Dang. St. Lawrence's head. So our other lead was Mother Illuminata tomorrow. Klaus was pretty depressing the last time we talked to him. We might as well just eat here. I feel like this is our biggest lead. Either him or Martin. I'm kind of more interested in Martin. What he was trying to put Martin up to. Oh, I see. This is what I thought was the fork in the road for the forest. It's a little early. <laughs> hey guys, remember when I went to the wrong dinner? Oh dear, good times. Hey Martin. Andrea Smeller, good to see you again after all these years. I was surprised you'd say that. Your parting words to me back then were hardly kind. Were they? It's been so long, I don't remember. <laughs> you told me to eat shit. Oh. God, that's bad. I was such a little shit. <laughs> well, sorry for being such an asshole back then. Seems like you've learned a lot since then. Seven years is a long time for a young man, especially when going through what I was. What happened to you anyway? Oh, right. You know I stole some of the Baron's things. I didn't make it far with them. I tried to sell them and wallow and I got robbed. Serves me right, I guess. Luckily, they didn't find the coins I was carrying. The money carried me around Bavaria for another month and a half. Then I started stealing. I grew bigger and more confident over time and became a highwayman. Holy shit, Martin. You were abandoned? Hard to believe, I know, but yes. Anyway, it didn't last long. I eventually got scared out of it. I had a partner for the last year of my adventures. I tried to rob some Italians, as you do. We thought they were merchants traveling under the banner of St. George. But they were soldiers guarding money from the bank of St. George in Genoa. Exactly. I learned that later. My partner didn't survive the encounter. I was wounded and alone in the wilderness. I thought of my father, my mother, Brigida. I realized I couldn't remember Wolf's face anymore. Dead. I had to come back and take up the responsibilities I had left behind. <clears throat> was it coming was coming back difficult? It was. Felt like I had stepped out of another life into this one. It took me a while to get used to everything, to remember how things used to be. That's all in the past now. I just need to look forward. That was quite a speech you gave back at the commons. He needs support. Tom's folk art is committed to opposing the abbot. They have less to gain and more to lose if the abbot chooses to get the duke involved. Anyway, I have to get back to work. Good talking to you, Andreas. All right, until later. Damn, Martin gave us a lore drop. Can you believe that I could have got this guy killed? Like, I could have pointed the finger at him to that guy. 
the way, kind of the way I tip a fair <laughs> Oh, still regret all of that. Brigitte. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Brigitte. How are you? As well as anyone can be in Tassing right now. Looks like things are going well for you. Martin returned after all. Yes, the winter without him was excruciating. I lost little Wolf, and Kat was worried she'd lose the farm after Franz died. But then Martin returned, and he's prov provided well for us ever since. Despite the tightening restrictions, we've gotten by, I'm thankful. I'm sorry to hear about little baby wolf. Thank you. It's... I try not to think about it. Not regretfully. Kat wants to talk about him all the time, you know. Any night there's clear skies, she looks up and asks if I ever wonder he if he's up there. That must be excruciating. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, Andreas. I can't talk about this anymore. I'm sorry I brought him up, Brigida. You didn't know. It's all right. It's been good to see you again, but I should be going until later. Until then. Oh, it's heartbreaking. How's, uh... How's clearly not the place I thought it was. Where's the widow? Uh, here's where I got lost before. So I accidentally ended up eating dinner with Hetty. Ugh. Where is the widow? Martin Bauer and the widow Kemperin. It's last names. Is that my widow? Or the mom? No, 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 no. Looking for Kemper. Kemper. Who the hell's is Kemper? In? Is that my widow? Hetty Bowerin. Cat Baron. Okay, so it's not them. I thought it might be them. Widow of France, wife of Johan. Oh, sorry, Johan, not dead. Um, so that's got to be my widow. She's not here, though. house? I feel like it was. I know she was going to get her house taken away because of the death tax. Huh. I'm going to go with probably not good, good times for uh, my widow friend. All right. If, okay, here's the problem. It's not mealtime. What is my objective? Gartner Farm? Why? Claire invited us to spend time for supper. Oh, okay. I thought I had to go over to Ava's, but nope. Clara. <clears throat> right back to where it all started. Pay attention, Casper. Just let her pet your head for a second. 
Hello, fellows. Hello, child. Hello, Ursula. Do you remember me? Um, no. Should I? You used to poke me in the foot with a stick to wake me up. I did? You did. I stayed in the room upstairs. I kind of remember that. Cough, cough. I think you told me a story once. Mom and Dad sometimes talk about you. They say you went away for more training. What was that like? Well, while I was in Aragon, I learned a new technique to make colors that... No, not about the art, Andreas. About your travels. All right, all right. Uh, in the forests of Aragon, I saw a giant. What? They call him Basarahau. He's nine feet tall. His beard is as big, as long as Big York's whole body. One foot is like yours or mine, but the size of a whole pig. The other is a tree trunk. He whistles to the shepherds when storms are coming so they can get their flocks to safety. How did you see him? Cough. I was in the forest and he spied on me because I was eating bread, which everyone knows is the Basarahu's favorite food. I wish I could see a giant someday. <laughs> Andres. <coughs> Andreas, can I ask you something? Of course. Do you know the stories about Perchta and the Wild Hunt? Oh yeah, Perchta's a um a pagan uh, deity. Hold on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How do I do the thing? Do the thing. Goddess of the Alps. So cool. Wild Hunt is a supernatural cavalcade of spirits and fiends which may cause destruction or portent war and other catastrophe. <coughs> if not adequately appeased, the Wild Hunt is often led by a legendary figure such as Perchta or the Devil. Hell yeah. Tell me more, Ursula. A little. I didn't learn about them until I lived here. Why? Are they, like, bad? <laughs> it's too close to home. Bad how? Well, my grandpa tells me things about Perchta and, like, the spirits and charms. And the old woman, Otilia. Otilia! That's my widow. Otilia, she talks about them, too, and says all these words I don't, like, understand. She told me they're part of the old ways or something. So why do you think they're bad? Well, my dad says I shouldn't listen to any of it. He said it's like nonsense and that Father Thomas would be mad. He said he only tolerates it with old people because they're too, like, stuck in their ways. I don't want to get in, like, trouble. But Grandpa says if I don't do, if I don't, Learn the old ways. They'll just be, like, forgotten. Why are you asking me? I'm afraid, like, if I ask someone else, they'll tell my dad or worse, Father Thomas. So are they, like, bad? <laughs> I feel like I gave this girl a valley girl persona and she's clearly, like, racked with consumption. Uh, no, they're not bad. Um, hmm. do we help this girl not die? <clears throat> That's too much tea. That's too much tea. Um, hmm. We can help her out. You know, toe the line, social mores and all that. They're not bad. Uh, but those stories could get you in trouble, so maybe should it learn about the old ways? I don't know. Don't die. Like, really? 
Well, they're just stories, of course, but... <laughs> I'm trying to get her to reject the old ways, and all I've done is tell her crazy shit. <laughs> Hilarious. She just coughs on me. Uh, I'm like, sorry. Forget I said anything. Until later, I'll be here with all my mixed messages. All night. Hello, Andreas. Good to see you back in town. Hello, Veronica. How have you been? Oh, you know, pulled every which way. Mom's been a cow about where I'll give her... About when I'll give her grandchildren? As if I'm not doing enough work already. It's a good idea to set yourselves up for the future, Veronica? I don't know. No? You shouldn't rush something as important as children, I guess. That's what I keep telling her. Maybe you should talk to her, Andreas. If it comes from someone as successful as you, maybe she'll pay attention. Anyway, I should get back to work. We're all preparing for the festival. I'll leave you to it until later, Veronica. I'll talk to this old man over here. Hello, ill Peter. Eh? Everyone's coughing. Oh, it's you, the artist from a few years ago. Yes, Andreas Mailer. Everyone in town knows me. I'm surprised you remember me. Hmm, everyone seems to think my mind is going, but it's still sharp as a nail. Endress is making nails, you know. Good man. Right. Are you staying with my family again? No, I'm staying at the Golden Hand. Ugh, this miser's charge us just as much as pilgrims for a drink, but won't support my son in his cause. New Abbot must have gotten to them, the bastard. <laughs> Why do you hate the Abbot so much? Are you going to kill the Abbot? I can put you to death, ill Peter. Everything went to shit after Father Matthias died. That man, God rest his soul, never increased taxes. He might have asked for a tithe in hotter winters, but we're happy to help the Abbey then. <laughs> we could take from the forest, as we needed. Brother Florian used to help us in our illnesses. Let us follow in the ways of our forefathers. A true Christian, that old abbot. And then? Father Gernot promised he wouldn't keep everything between the Abbey and us peasants the same. Oh, he would, that he would, that things would be status quo. And we were foolish enough to believe him. Ahem. <laughs> At first, he refused to allow Florian to come down anymore. Oh, shit. War Doctor Florian? Kept up at the Abbey? Taxes got higher? He stopped allowing us to pay in goods and livestock? Now he only takes coin! As though we can come by enough of that in a year to pay our rents alone. Bastard doesn't give a damn about us, not how Father Matthias did. I didn't realize how bad the restrictions were for you. Heh, no, of course you don't. Not your kind with your fancy hats and tassels and furs. You don't need to see the troubles of us common folk. Why should this new abbot gra be grander than us all? <laughs> I should go. You're coughing all over me. Eh, all right. Okay, cool. Ill Peter is going to be in the revolution for sure. Clara. Hello again, Andreas. We're about to sit down to supper. Care to join? It'll be my pleasure. You are, you are the only option for me for supper tonight. <laughs> Truly a blessing to have everyone back together again, if only briefly. Keep an eye on that boy of yours, Andreas. Oh, keep an eye on that boy of yours, Andreas. See that he minds how much he takes. Young boys ate too goddamn much. Peter, stop that. Andreas is our guest. Why don't you lead us in grace? Fine. Prayers, prayers. Prayers, prayers. We are praying for Christine. Gone now these many years. 
Please help me protect my family in these difficult times. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, amen. Everyone's all about that. That's right, Casper. Mind your manners. Master Andreas, why are we the only ones with bread? <clears throat> oh, boy. Why do I say this shit? Right, Casper, kids say the darndest things. Quiet, Casper. Andreas, it's so good to have you at our table again. And with another guest, is this young man your assistant? Casper, yes, he's my apprentice. This is on the up and up. Ah, <laughs> that would explain why I saw him writing in that little journal. I remember you did the same thing when you lived here. Let's eat that bread first, get it out of the way. Do you still draw in your journal, Andreas? Oh, sometimes when the mood strikes. Wouldn't that be nice, you all? If only we had to work when the whim took us. And we toil all day, and that despicable abbot is starving us all the while he sips on his sacramental fucking wine. <laughs> They're all from Dad. He only just got here. Cheese next. Obviously, I need that first, but since Casper's apparently not eating, I'll probably have to eat his too. How have the fates been treating you these last few years? <laughs> Ugh. The Lord is testing us with another hard season, I'm afraid. That's one way to say it. Been miserable as shit all around. <laughs> Maybe you should be resting, Grandpa. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna do it sitting in my own goddamn table. The whole family's been ill, Andreas. Peter, his father, and Ursula, with an ague, and me as well. Oh no, me, well... Clara lost a child in child b bed a year ago now. A tragedy. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Andreas. It was some time ago, but well, such things linger. It was a monstrous, monstrous. Uh, ooh, well, let's see what my old thinker has to say about this. Don't think about it. Just keep the conversation going. <laughs> okay. You're already thinking about it. Please leave me alone, just for a while. All right, just for a while. Remain silent. It seems the Lord rather looks in on tassing any longer. That's why it's time for us to take matters into our own hands. Yes, they're with the revolution! We're eating, not the table. God, revolution talk. Please, can we not talk about the snow? Time for the fresh pottage. Just everyone starts talking about the revolution. And I'm just like, Ooh. York. York here was married while you were away, Andreas. Really? <laughs> this guy? To whom? To me, Andreas. Why do you think I'm here? Oh shit, Veronica! I thought you were just visiting. Huh, no, I'm here for good. Here, this is my house. It's been a couple springs, but I'm still not used to being married. Congratulations, York. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Andreas. It's uh, been one, our one blessing in a dark season. With children soon to come, I hope. <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> do, do you? Uh, oh, forget it, Ursula. What have you been up to, Andreas? Wow. Uh, let's see what my thinker says. What should I say? My life seems so far from theirs now. Don't leave them waiting. I can't think of anything. Nothing but my miserable little problems. They'll think you're rude if you don't say something. Oh 
shit. Um, hmm. Well, I've been so busy with Casper's apprenticeship, I, I never have time to myself. Casper, you suck. Better not have any children, then. Well, I do my best to be helpful. <laughs> Ursula, maybe you should excuse yourself and rest. You are sick. But, Mom, I'm still, like, hungry. Here, Ursula, you can have mine. So cute. It's not fair that nobody else gets any bread besides Master Andreas and me. Stop. Ursula, give it back to him. I'm not going to have people in this town saying we can't feed our goddamn guests. Besides, we all have to work to get back to, don't we? Good. A lovely lunch. Time to get back to it, Andres. We'll see you and your boy later. My apologies, Peter. We didn't mean to overstay our welcome and offend you with our bread shenanigans. It's all right, Andreas. He's just in a bad mood. It was lovely to see you again. Yes, thank you for coming, Andreas. Uh, will you be staying for St. John's Eve? I think so. Good. Hopefully we'll see you later. Till then. Y'all, we made it through our first day. Seven years in the future. All right. Now, here's the part of the game that I make unnecessarily long by running around in the dark for no reason, but... But goddamn. We have found things, occasionally. Just gotta make the rounds. Okay, let's check the usual suspects. Let's see where I saw that ghost. The sin of Saul. The sin of Saul. Master, did you hear that? It sounded like someone crying out. I think it's Sister Amelie. She's a mystic. She may be having one of her visions. Sister Amelie, are you alright? The last time this happened, someone was fucking murdered. Philistines, this is the hand of God. Compline, compline. What's that? What's that? What's that? Ah, ah, ah. Monastic hour. Ah, someone's gonna die. Someone's gonna die. Okay. Uh. Uh. Okay. Okay. Compline. 8 p.m. One of the hours of prayer. The monks and nuns retire to their dormitories shortly after. Sister, something happening at Compline? It's Compline right now! No! Sister? Sister Amelie? Oh, <laughs> hello. You're the artist, Andreas. What did you see? See? I don't remember what did I say? Something about son, sin of Saul, Philistines? Let's look up Saul. First monarch of Israel, according to the Old Testament, Saul was divinely rejected from the kingship after disobeying the prophet Samuel's instructions. Rejected from kingship. Disobeying a prophet. Huh. Who is disobeying someone? Or it just could be the uh, the old abbot getting taken down from his seat of power. Oh, I wish Father Thomas were here. Oh, would you like Casper to go get him? Casper, why don't you go off on your own and help the uh, the wailing woman with the visions? If he could, yes. His house is just around the corner. Casper, go, go, run, get Father Thomas. Yes, Master Andreas. <laughs> Not terrified or anything. Your son? Who 
my apprentice, Caspar Ziegler from Salzburg. He seems eager to please you. And he is quite enthusiastic, yes. I have little knowledge of the workings of masters and apprentices. Oh shit, her house. My world is one of spirit decoupled from the march of life and death. Is that a creepy basement down there? I see and hear your world turning from this little window, but they are mercifully small glimpses. You chose a difficult life. Life is not difficult, but the choice was. My life belongs to God, and its trials are mine to endure in this cell. Your world is the world of normal lives and normal thoughts. It can be difficult to hear the divine, much less make sense of it. I have no will to be a part of that world. I strive to have no will at all, but to God. Oh, but to subordinate myself to the will of God. When my will is God, his will, he graces me with visions, confusing though they may be. Surely it could be interpreted with scripture. Few things are certain in this world. Scripture is a guide and aid, not a key to unlock all mysteries of heaven and earth. I have faith in what he wants to be revealed will be revealed in time. Until then, my responsibility is to contemplate these revelations and seek counsel in Father Thomas, who is totally not a suspect person at all. Uh, sister, what is that creepy hole in the ground? My grave. What the fuck? Uh, what? I dug it before Father Thomas read me my funeral rites before I was enclosed here. I dig a little more in it each day. Most people find it shocking. This is my devotion my vocation. Once someone finds their calling, they must answer it fully. <clears throat> was, a, was a calling to a cloistered life not enough? No, I thought it might be, but as you yourself have learned, the cloistered life is not so cloistered. The butting of the temporal world against the spiritual world is like flint against steel. Sparks are inevitable. Is your calling in question, Andreas? Is your life? Damn, this lady's awesome. Both, I think. I've lost my love. My love for art, love for family, love for nay, for, for anything. The last seven years have been hard. It was all too much for me. Don't lose hope, Andreas. The human heart is no small thing. It can hold so much. Ah, oh, that was a good scene. Andreas, thanks for sending Casper. She asked for you. You all right, Sister Amalie? Amalie? Yes, Father. I may have had another vision. Andreas said I spoke of the sin of Saul, Philistines, and Compline. What do you think it means, Father? Andreas? Casper, could you excuse us? We appreciate your help, but I must tend to her now in the church. Fuck you, Thomas. I'm staying right here. No. No, I'm staying right here. <laughs> Where's that option? <laughs> All right. Good evening. God bless you both. Damn, I shouldn't have told him what was in the vision. I'll start Andreas. I'm confused. What did that all mean? Not sure, but the last time I heard Sister Molly have a, vi a vision, 
It was just before the Baron was murdered. What? Do you think, could Sister Amelie be receiving warnings? It's possible, yes. Someone was going to be murdered. How do we stop it? We have to keep our eyes open and our wits about us. Casper, we have just formed the Murder Investigation Company. Come, Casper. Let us retire for the evening. Incredible. Incredible. So where is this inn? Hmm, I see. So I was likely going to have to pass here no matter what. So my nighttime wanderings were not rewarded. It was just kind of the cutscene that was waiting for me. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Let me in. I want to know what's going on. of the Virgin Mary. What does the labyrinth symbolize? Weird. All right, let's go check out the ghosts. Nope, still not rewarded for coming here. It's fine. Sorry, Casper. You never know. Strange things are afoot. The forest? Smoky? How, how are things? Smoky! Oh, hello, Master Miller. You're looking well. Thank you, Smoky. How are you? Oh, I'm well enough, I guess. Vaslav went, or, uh, Vaslav went his way a few years ago, which I suppose was bound to happen. I miss the company sometimes. Oh, but now there's no one to keep me from my gossip. Smokey's a gossip? No one to tell it to either. Just me, just old Smokey sitting here breathing in smoke for seven years. I'm always partial to a few new tidbits of information. Do tell, Smokey. Heh. <laughs> Half of the years in Tassing will be burning by the end, Master Mailer. And nearly all of them in the Abbey. Oh. I did see... Another. Imperial Reichspost courier ride from the Abbey a few days ago. Do tell, Smokey. Do tell. A private mail service run by Thun and Taxus family and approved by the Holy Roman Empire. Brother Guy dropped the bag once. It looked heavy. The Abbey must be doing better than that abbot is letting on. I heard the Abbey was struggling with its funds. Curious, isn't it? The couriers arrive once or twice a month. It doesn't help that the abbot has tightened restrictions so close to St. John's Eve, too. Townsfolk get up to all sorts of mischief, then. Ooh, what sort of mischief? I'd wager Johan and Kat will find some corner to play in again. Wait, isn't Kat the old lady? Hell yeah! Get it. Get it, you guys. It's practically tradition at this point. Veronica and Brigida might go out for a midnight dip by the waterfall, too. <clears throat> Hot. Even though Veronica's married now? They've been swimming out there for years. Oh! Secret love tryst. Let me take a note of that. Um, where do I put that in? Townspeople? Veronica married Big Yorg, but is in love with Brigida, wife of Martin. Sexy waterfall time. 
Now everyone's getting clever, trying to stay out from the abbot's eye. He's a formidable man. And see you in town commons during Otto's speech. Are you standing with the peasants? Well, their cause doesn't really affect me, does it? I'm as worried as anyone about soldiers rushing through here, but the new taxes and restrictions don't bother me. I understand why they're upset, but I've been doing fine out here with less than they have. Nothing will change for me if they get their way. You can still support them, Smokey. I mean, you're covered in soot. You're very intimidating. I don't want to get involved. I'm fine as I am. Supporting them would be the proper Christian thing to do, I guess. But when I have any of them done... Well, when have any of them done the Christian thing for me? Old Smokey, out in the woods, being Smokey. Uh, the Christian way, like textbook, is uh, helping without expecting anything in return. It's the giving that counts, Smokey. Oh shit, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> Whoops. Pride is a sin, Master Mailer. You probably should have said that other thing. All I want is fairness, decency. I've given them my work for years, but they refuse to treat me right. They mock me for my blind faith, since I have to keep a constant eye on the kiln for days on end, can't go to church as often. They laugh at the way I stink. I can't help that, you know. I'm smoky. Hence, one must be even stronger of heart to forgive them their follies. I'm not sure if I have it in me. Ah, well, enough of that. Thanks for stopping by, Master Mailer, trying to make me a better man, but I'm just Smokey. Until later, Smokey. Until then. Amazing. All right. We did have a nice chat in the forest at night. It's all I've ever wanted. Mm. Come, let's go to the inn. Or should we sneak around the abbey? Hmm. Such a good part of the game. I hope if I pet the animals enough, they will come to my aid. Oh, very unlikely that I could enter the abbot's house that I've never been able to enter. Right, let's see what we can get up to at night. Hello? Hello? Anyone want to let us in? God damn it. All right. Well, you know, due diligence and all that. Oh, yeah, you can get to the forest from here, too. Did not know that. Is anyone still up? It's a cool layout. Joaquin, hello. You love this game. I also love this game. I'm on day two. Day two of my first uh, seven year jump here. We had a good time at the, um, well, I assume you played it, so there, there will be spoilers for Seven Year Jump Pentiment plot, but, okay, you have, good. Um, yeah, we went to the town square, we saw some peasants getting all riled up, Otto, Martin, 
um, when we just saw Sister Amelie talking about compline and how someone's definitely going to (laughs) die. So um, now I'm dragging my young apprentice into it, Uh, Casper. We are a two-person detective agency, so that'll be clearly something that I won't regret (laughs) ruining his life forever. Hey, Daryl, welcome in. Welcome in, Raiders. Um, Oh, man, it's been so long since I've streamed. Aha, how do I do this? Aha, I remember. How are you doing tonight? (laughs) Thanks for the raid, Daryl. Me and my young apprentice are sleeping in two separate age-appropriate beds. And uh, it's not creepy. It's the Middle Ages. It's fine. All right, good. I'll take it. I'm also all right. I'm, like, still sick, and so all of the... Doing all the voices is tough. But I love this game so much. I missed it. Nothing will stop me. Nothing will stop me and my ginger tea. Is that bell tolling because it's morning or because someone's dead? Did you drop this, Casper? No, I don't think so, Master. God damn it! God damn it, it's back! Oh no! The murderer is back! Oh my god, I put an innocent man to death! No! That script looks beautiful, Master Andreas. Did you write that? You were warned. Oh yeah, they told me to stay the fuck away from here. Oh my god. Why didn't they... Why didn't they kill me? They were in my room while I was sleeping. Oh, man. So the last time we were here, seven years ago, this handwriting, this, like, really nice script, there were notes given to people who were enemies of the Baron. The Baron ended up getting murdered. Everyone who was essentially a suspect because they had beef with him received a note like this. I pointed the finger at one of them. Turns out that was just an innocent dude getting killed. You're welcome. Hmm. Joaquin, have you played the whole game through already? Casper, warned. What does that mean? Warned about what? Oh, shit, how far do I drag Casper into this? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a little bit so he has some context. It has to do with the murder that happened the last time I was here. How? I thought they caught the murderer. Sweet, innocent Casper. Yes, but complicated. Let's just head up to the library, Casper. <laughs> All right, Master. Has there been a murder, Hannah? 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 Oh, God damn it! You there? What day is it? Good, good day. Nako. Oh, okay. Hello. You fancy gentlemen. Uh, no one knows about murder. What happened at Compline last night?
Guy, Guy, tell me everything. Andreas. Brother Guy, what are you, what are you doing out here? Father Gerno has asked me to inform the townsfolk that the shrine is closed. Has something happened to the shrine? Father Abbot has ordered that we bring the hand into the church. The pilgrims are still welcome to come in and visit the relic, but it's off limits to the townsfolk. So I feel like we did know that he already closed the shrine. So as a refresher, St. Moritz was a martyr, um, was Tassing's patron saint, protected a town of Christians from slaughter. He was a Roman soldier, and then he was a traitor to Rome because he refused to kill Christians. Because at the time, Romans hated Christians. And then St. Satya's shrine, which we've seen in the woods, was the original pagan story. Um... She led him to a spring. He baptized her and snows melted. And then, like, she was martyred for her faith. Oh. <clears throat> okay, maybe they're part of the same story. Okay, so it's like the chain of sacrificing yourself. So St. Satya was originally a pagan, and then Moritz was like, let me help you change your heathen ways and then she died for that and then he took a stand against the Romans yeah and was like listen I already converted some of the locals so I'm also going to take a stand and die for Christianity okay whoa um okay so then I think the pagan story was what I learned from ill Peter so Ill Peter told me a story about someone named Gaius and Mars sending a wolf and like a spring popped up. So there was like an original story that this whole Satya Moritz thing overwrote. Cool. Guy, you're still an asshole. What? Why? The abbot has had enough of the peasants and townsfolk rebelling against the abbey. He is their rightful lord. The, well, damn. The abbot has been more than generous, but he will not let his 12 articles drivel past. The abbot refuses to leave the relic at risk of destruction. The hand of St. Moritz is the only thing keeping the abbey open. Hey, Azunti. <laughs> Welcome in. Insight is tight. Hey, thank you. 13 months. That's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Appreciate you. How are you doing? <laughs> Azunti saw on Discord the other day, I fired up Final Fantasy for the first time ever. Like, literally, I, like, touched it. And Azunti's like, oh, what's that? Final Fantasy? What's up? What's up? What's up? I was, like, dying laughing. How are you doing? Okay. Hmm. Um, but Tassing, I'm going to use logic here, but Tassing relies on St. Moritz just as much as the Abbey. What about the faith of the townsfolk? Is it all about money with you, monks? <laughs> Cynthia, I'm a bit sleepy, but I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I am, I am still a little sick and recovering. Well, I'm recovering, I will say. Um, so hopefully, hopefully a little bit better every day. Uh, good enough to stream for a bit, so I'm excited about that. Um, thank you for dropping in and for the sub. Appreciate that. And <laughs> Dana and Day, what's up? I'm doing great. Good. Someone's got to be doing great here. Someone's got to carry this team. Welcome in. Guy, then they can stop engaging in such heretical and sinful behavior. The abbot is trying to protect the relic, nothing more. Oh my god. 
No one wants to destroy the hand of St. Moritz, guy. The abbot is a cruel man, and you're no better defending him. I will do my duty as my vows and my lord command me, Andreas. I've taken the vow of snively henchmen. God bless you. <laughs> Asunti, yeah, Final Fantasy is exciting. Dana and Tully just finished checking out Star Trek Picard. Season 3. The last episode was flipping awesome. Oh, yes. You have told me to watch this many times, and it is still on my watch list. I, I need to get to it. Um, no spoilers. I fully intend to indoctrinate myself into that universe one day. Ignore seasons one and two, they are trash. Okay. Well, that just shortened my watch list significantly. All right. So we have a sh shrine that's closed. Marguerite, how are you doing? Hello, who's there? Hello, Sister Marguerite. It's Andreas Meller, the artist. Oh, Master Meller. Mother Illuminata said you'd returned. Is there someone else with you? Yes, my youthful and motivated apprentice, Casper. Hello. God bless you, Casper. You smell even more of paint than your master. Uh. Sister Marguerite is blind. She relies on her other senses, Casper. Don't be a dick. Oh, uh, thank you. Ha, you're funny. Anyway, I should go. Mother Illuminata doesn't like when we're distracted from our duties. And as we have told you many, many times, we do not like talking to men. Get the hell out of this garden. Of course. Until later, sister. God bless you, Master Mailer. And you too, Casper. Marguerite! Marguerite! Was there a murder at Compline last night? Let me pet this cat. Perfect. Hey, thank you so much for that gift sub. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I keep going into the same little hut thinking that sis Sister Illuminata is going to be in there, or Mother Illuminata is going to be in there. It's just like a nothing room. <laughs> Let me just stand here awkwardly. Isn't that right, Casper? Thank you so much. Oh, for OKSDM OK too. That's great. <clears throat> Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, we got to find what's going on here. The interior workings of the church. Mother Illuminata, I'd probably be where Sister Illuminata was before at my work. Oh, Rutger. <clears throat> Andreas. Oh, it's wonderful to see you again, you little shit who blackmailed me. How have things been going for you in Nuremberg? I've actually been in Barcelona recently. Uh, Nuremberg is the, s the same. Same. Ah, well. It's good to see you in any case, you little shit who blackmailed me. Forgive me for asking, but, uh, did you find the music in Aragon? Wonderful. Several years ago, I heard a cantor in Zaragoza with a wonderful voice and an interesting composition. I believe his name was Juan Garcia de Basturo, Basurto, though he has since moved on to another cathedral. Oh, if he is as talented as you say, I must imagine we will see his music sooner or later. I love our music, of course, but I'm interested in what is being created across Christendom. I suppose you came to pay your respects to Brother Piero. I'm so sorry, Andres. 
This guy is legit nice to me, even though I totally tried to blackmail him and, like, put his life on the line. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I don't deserve it. He was a wonderful man and a faithful servant of Christ. He was my friend and teacher. Well, despite the occasion, it's good to see you again. God bless you, Andreas. Oh, Rucker doesn't hate us. How about you, Mathau? Oh, I'm so sorry. Ankh isn't here to do Mathau's voice. I can't, I can't even approximate it. She does such a good job. <laughs> For that line. God bless you, Andres. I don't know. This is a terrible impression. Ah, uh, Mathau. Okay. Should we look at all the tombstones? Mother Cecilia. The headstone is well made. Her family must have commissioned it. Who else? Who else? This is the, where we dug up that grave. <laughs> Good times. Brother Piero. Rest in peace, my old friend. Hey, Doc. <laughs> it's uh, weird to see you out of context. I almost didn't recognize you. Hello, who is this? Uh, it's Andreas, Brother Adoc. Andreas Mailer. Oh. Oh, Andreas, the fine young artist from Nuremberg. <laughs> Not quite so young anymore, brother. Don't you see my beard and hat? No, you're still young. When you were last here, I thought I was old. I was wrong. Now I feel the true measure of years on these bones. Like the waves of the wide sea on the cliffs of Porth Cragen. Time has worn me down. But enough of that. How have you been, Andreas? <clears throat> um, you know... Successful in body, if, if not in spirit. Casper, why the hell do you have a giant flower growing out of your head? <laughs> I'm sorry, Andreas. Dreams of youth often do not survive the march of years. But take heart that the Lord is always here with us in times of sorrow. <laughs> old, old man voice on point. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you seem more at ease now than when I was last here. Do I? It may cease be so. I may have worked in the scriptorium beyond the limits of this body. It pained my joints and strained my brotherly love for Guy. <laughs> <laughs> the scriptorium took my sight and the use of my hands, and when it closed, it also took the pain from my heart. <laughs> that sounds like a regular Monday, am I right? <laughs> Abbot is content to let me serve the Lord through prayer and contemplation. And so it also contents me. I'm sorry, Andreas. This conversation has been boring as shit, and I must rest now. It's good to hear your voice at Kirsau again. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Adok. Not suspicious at all. Not suspicious at all. Have a good night, Azumti. No worries. Have a good rest, and thank you for the sub. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your final th fantasy enthusiasm. <laughs> really appreciate it. Have a good night. And uh, yeah, I will let you know how the mystery goes. Zedna! Oh, man, I'm really missing Ankh now. We're going to talk to Zedna. Zedna's another classic Ankh character. Okay. I think she was a farmer. 
Oh, boy. Right? Or was it like... I think Zedna's voice changed rapidly. Um, greetings, Master Mailer. I can't even, I can't even try. This, this is the domain of Ankh here. <clears throat> Hello, Sister Zedna. Oh, maybe she could be sexy. You're looking like a real artist now. I'm impressed. You must be living like a lord. Oh, boy. Um, wow. Does he hate his wife? I don't think so. Um, yes, but overburdened with problems. I have no time for my own art, only that of my patrons. How dreadful. At least you can choose your patrons and do whatever vocation you please. Why don't you like living at Kearsau, sister? I'm not like you, Andreas. I never chose this life. My family couldn't marry me off to anyone of higher rank, so they donated to the Abbey. Happy International Women's Day, everyone. Yesterday. Belated. <laughs> Zedna. The amount was substantial enough for the Abbey to make me to take me in as a nun. I was forced to take the habit. I loved my life before Kearsau. At least you chose your vocation. I was shoved into mine and forgotten. And here you are, muttering as though you weren't the most successful person in Tassing right now. I had no idea. I'm sorry. Please do not hurt me, Zedna. You're lucky to have the life you do, Andreas Mailer. You men can become whatever you like. While I, a woman of noble birth, am forever stuck sitting with crones and old men. I have accepted a lot these past years, but I can never, I can't ever, be as perfect as Illuminata. Still, it's better than it was. I should return to my duties. Thank you for speaking with me, Andreas Miller. Never speak to me again. <laughs> Until later, Zedna. Greetings, Master Miller. Fuck you. Man. The scriptorium fell into disrepair quickly after Father Guerno closed the library. <clears throat> Mother Illuminata. God bless you, Andreas. It has been too long. I know the Father Abbot made it clear you were not to return when you left. We had hoped to hear from you. Yes, my apologies. You're right, of course. Um, good to see you again, Mother Illuminata. Do you remember we had that, um, that rap battle where we were both floating inside a book and you were telling me stories and then I told you not to burn a book and it was, like, really weird? Do you remember that? Oh, this is Casper. God bless you, Mother Superior. God bless you, young Casper. Master Mailer. Sister Zedna, we literally just spoke. Sorry, you have to see it in such a state. It seems it sees very little use these days. What happened? After Baron Rothvogel's murder, we had a few and fewer wealthy patrons. Because he got murdered. A small number that held uh, out lost interest. It's easier to commission new work from the Guild of St. Luke or individual masters in big cities like Nuremberg or places where you don't get murdered. Father Gernau saw no reason to keep the scriptorium or library open. Most of the books here have been suffering of neglect. After Mother Cecilia's death, neither I nor Sister Zedna, huge chip on our shoulder, that one, had the time to maintain our inventory. Piero did say it was going to happen sooner or later. I'm no happier about it than you are, but only the late brother was right. Only heaven is unchanging. Now, all that remains are books for sale to interested parties, a task that Father Gernow has entrusted to me. Uh, and Sister Zedna, of course, but she's just such a bitch sometimes. Well, I'm eager to look through your inventory. Master Andreas, maybe you could find a book for little Magdalene, something that's not in print yet. Excellent idea, Casper. 
Zedna, you're looking <sighs> bored. Parzival. Perhaps Klaus would not object to the romance given its emphasis on Christian virtues. German's a little dated, but I'm sure she'll figure it out with Klaus's help. Who knows? Maybe it will inspire her imagination. I think these are Latin translations of some of Origen's homilies. What is that? Prolific first century ascetic theologian. Exegetical writings and homilies? Influence the development of the Trinity and the ransom theory of atonement. Can't say I'm familiar. Also, it looks like it's partially burned. Probably not a great gift for a young... Wait! This is the same bookhand as the notes I found when the Baron was murdered. Whoever wrote this is responsible for writing the notes. I need to ask Illuminata about this. That's a clue. That's a clue. That's a huge clue. Let's look for more clues. <clears throat> Copy of Jacobus de Vorgain's Golden Legend. Every good Christian should know the legends of the saints. And the Latin is simple enough that she should be able to read it before long. So many good ideas. Oh, Richard de Bury's Philobiblon. Ha! It's a text on the collection of preservation of books. Maybe this is where Illuminata and Cecilia learned all their tricks. Certainly a good book for a printer's daughter. Oh, I'm trying to assuage my guilt of not being there for Klaus by doting on his daughter. I get it. Albertus Magnus's de Animalibus. It's ostensibly a bestiary, but it contains so much more knowledge on a variety of topics. This could inspire an interest in animals and the natural world. Beautiful illustrations as well. Great. Amazing. Good thing I'm rich, right, Casper? All right, Illuminata. Um, tell me who the murderer is. Have you decided on any books to purchase? Uh, yes, just one, apparently. Which is the one that has the thing? Oh my god, you guys. Not the animal bus. Damn it. Can I check my thingy? Uh. Oh god. Uh. <laughs> okay, help. It's not the animal bus. That's the one with the animals. The, the Philobiblion, I think I laughed at that. Okay, what's Parzival? Uh. Themes of love and chivalry. Is that the one that was written by the murderer? Shit. Shit. Chat. Help me. Ah. Oh, God. I didn't know. I thought I was... I thought I was rich. I thought I was going to buy all of them. This was not made clear to me. Casper. Fuck. Golden legend. All right, how the hell, can I exit, exit, wait, I'm not, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. I think it's one of these two. Uh, okay, one of them was about book preservation, one of them was about animals. I don't remember what the Fibla Biblion was because I was laughing at it so much. Although, Bib probably is the book preservation? Oh, God. Chat! Chat, help me! Uh, son of a bitch. I want to buy the murderer book. Oh, man. I don't like this. What a dirty trick.
it's not the first one. Can I get to my inventory from this menu? No. No. Nope. No, I can't. Okay. Nope. Nope. Which one's the murder book? I don't even remember what the murder book was. Ah. Uh. Was the murder book the one about books? No. Ooh, I don't like this. Maybe it was Parzival. Gosh, oh, shit, shit, shit. Damn. Give me, give me, give me the juice. Is that the one? Yes, yes, the murder book, the murder book. Oh, thank God. Okay. I thought they were going to screw me over. I thought they were going to be like, wow, way to not pick the murder book. I, I, I don't, okay, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about the murder book. This is the first time I've seen it. Where did you find it? Apparently I picked a romance for Klaus's daughter. <laughs> Whoops. I was so preoccupied with the murder book selection. I've only seen it on one of the lower shelves. I don't think it's in our catalog. It's burned around the edges. Why? How can I find out where it came from and who wrote it? If it's not in our catalog, I'm afraid I don't know whom you could ask. It was a recent addition. The only people who would know are Mother Cecilia, who's dead, and Father Matthias, who's also dead. That's a shame, because whoever scribed this book wrote the letters I found while investigating the Baron's murder. The ones in the fine book hand. Brother Adduck told me about them. Perhaps he knows something about this book. He's been here longer than all of us. Why would a person who wrote the letters have scribed a book in our library? Well, that's the question. Whoever did this is the thread puller. Huh? Someone who is manipulating people at Kearsau and Tassing, pulling at threads to provoke someone into killing the Baron. That one of the brothers killed the Baron. Uh, he did, he did, definitely did that. But the Baron was lured to the chapter house by someone who knew Kearsau and Tassing's secrets. Well, I'm afraid we can't be of any more help to you in determining the book's provenance. I hope that little girl enjoys the romance book that you mistakenly bought for her. However, it's not our own catalog and it's already damaged. I doubt Father Abbott would mind if you kept it. Excellent, thank you. I'm glad someone bothered to save it from the flames. Ooh, Zedna ran away real fast. Okay, uh... Apparently that's not the murder bell, that's just time. Ooh, there's definitely a rat back there. See you later. Sedna, why'd you run away? Greetings, Master Mela. Cool, 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 cool. Everything looks on the up and up here. Now that Ferenc is dead. Ay, ay, ay. Where were we supposed to eat? Objective. Oh, the, the Druckers? All right, all right, I guess. There's gotta be something else going on now. Should we check out the crypt? Hmm. Apparently not useful anymore. A 
Hello? Is anyone here? Oh, Lucas. Always good to see you. Hello? Cellar. Ooh, a cutscene. I knew the cats would help me. What the hell was that? Feed the cat. <laughs> what a strange, here can you see it? What a strange, strange cutscene, okay. Is it my goal to find and feed every animal in this town? <laughs> Except for these animals, of course. Someone else takes care of them. This area has not been important to me yet at all. Oops. gonna pet everything now. <laughs> that cutscene, so strange. I truly thought something very important was going to happen in that cellar. Hello, Abbott. Is, that, is anyone here? Where are you, Abbott? Can I go upstairs? There's got to be more shit going on at this giant place. Guy, forget you. Where is everyone? Where's Florian? Hmm. Saint Luke. All right. No one's there. Chapter house? That's where that guy died. Looks like they cleaned the blood off the walls, thank goodness. All right, is there a clue in here? Is there someone who has like a visage of Saul or something? Ah, they're just having a good time. Where is everyone? There you are. Florian, Rodger, this guy. Uh-huh, yep. Adoc, wonderful. So lovely to see you all. Thanks for inviting me. Father Garno. That's right, I'm back, buddy. <laughs> I was... <laughs> so funny. I was in here with Lucas, and I just did not run far enough <laughs> to see them all. <laughs> oh my goodness. Truly, the level of wandering that I do in this game is, is unparalleled. Look at this. All right, well, speaking of going to the wherever this is, what is this place called? The Lavatorium. We will take a short lavatorium break <laughs> and we'll be back shortly.
Hey, y'all. So, did you figure out the mystery while I was gone? Great. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Well, I think we have done our requisite amount of wandering around in places we're not supposed to be. Honestly, guys, all of this talking, at first I was really struggling earlier than the stream. I think I've healed myself. I think, I think you live saw me go from like recovering to recovery. Hmm? Hmm? Remind me. Remind me of this tomorrow morning when I feel like garbage. <laughs> oh, boy. It's the tea. Tea and water is my friend. Are? Are my friend. Oh, goodness. All right. All right. Well, you know, time for dinner with the Druckers. Lunch. Lunch with the Druckers. I don't think they give us any options anymore. Yeah. It's very strict now. Thomas, you bastard. Here we go. I don't recognize you people at all. Who the hell are you? Klaus? You're back. Good. Almost ready to sit down to eat. Would you and Casper care to join us? Of course. Thank you, Klaus. I brought this inappropriate romance novel for your daughter. Welcome back, Andreas. Casper. Andreas, these are some friends. Benjamin and Rachel Sommerfeld. They're on their way back to Prague. Good day. Hello. Excuse me for not getting up. It's a bit difficult. Of course, I understand. It's nice to meet you both. Hello. Boof, brr. Hello. That sounded like a real word, Klaus. She's learning more of them every day. She'll be reading before long. That's a wonderful segue into the gift that I've brought her. <laughs> oh. A book from the Abbey Library. Is this for her or for you? Her, I swear. Parzival? I'm sure she'll love this. It might make some good bedtime reading until she can read it on her own. Thanks for this. It's a nice thought. We should probably pray before we eat, assuming the Sommerfelds don't mind. Not at all. We're accustomed to being guests in Christian homes. Thank you for asking, Klaus. <laughs> I like that they'll have the same voice. We'll just give them the same voice. All right, I'll lead the prayer then. Uh, prayer, 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 prayer. And amen. Amen! Good prayer. Klaus, thank you again for letting us stay. <laughs> it's been such a long trip. Oh, is it time? I know, I'm fine. I think I just, I'm just sore everywhere. Oof. Anyway, we hoped to get some weeks home weeks ago, but the fighting has made it slow progress from Basil. Basil? Tassing is hardly on the way to Prague. We'd rather not get caught up in battles between Swabby and League and peasants, so we've taken a strange route. We were in Basel to do some business, but we didn't want for to overstay our welcome. Okay. Why did that turn to woodblock? Is it really so bad for Jews there? Why is this in woodblock now? Weird. Let's just say they've gone back and forth enough on Jews and Basil that it's best not to feel too comfortable. We feel comfortable enough with our host, but Benjamin is right. We couldn't stay long. Do you know the printer Johan Froben? 
How could I not? How could I not be? No, him. He's turned Basil into the pride of Swiss printing. He has incredible artists working for him. Oh, true. We certainly don't mind that he publishes books in Hebrew. That's why we visited. Benjamin and I are creating a Hebrew type for him. Turns out, when your town banishes all the Jews, you have a more difficult time finding Jews to work for you. Who could have guessed? I just wish it hadn't taken us so long to get home. We have so far to go still. It's lucky for me, though. Now my two printers and master artist at my dinner table. Now I have two printers and a master artist at my dinner table. Oh, that's so cute. It is such an artis uh, artisan-focused table. True. It's not all misfortune. Daddy. Oh, yes, thank you. And a future printer and baby printer to be. Dassing hasn't seen this many artists under one roof in a while. It's amazing to see how far printing has come so quickly. Some of the engravings I've seen are incredible. And new techniques, new types, new styles are being developed every year. Benjamin is trying to create a more readable script for Yiddish. We have typefaces for Hebrew, but it would be nice to have something separate for Yiddish. How novel! Yes, still a developing typeface and usually only used in Jewish women's books. I'd like our writing to be more accessible, especially to those who only read Yiddish. No. Here, something like this. I'll be sure to send you some samples when I finish, Klaus. Good, I'd like that. Oof! I'm... Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> Klaus, wh what are you working on? I need to get ready to sell to travelers as the pass is open, but lately I've been printing the 12 articles for the town. 12 articles. Thanks to Father Thomas, everyone in town can read at least well enough to make it through that sheet. Got a lot of people talking, and a lot are coming over to Otto's way of thinking. Well, you heard him yourself, Andreas. What do you think of what's happening in Tassing? Abbott's always been an ass. What do you expect? Not wrong. Remember what happened to Otilia's house? The abbot took it away. Where is Otilia? Oh, shit. She lost everything. She works for Father Thomas now. That Father Thomas? Something's going on with that guy. She what? I was surprised as you are now. We all were, but that's the only charity available to her. Sorry. Not trying to bring up bad memories. I was just trying to say that things have been hard on the peasants for years. It's just gotten worse lately. The Abbey's been in such a bad state. There must be someone the Abbot can appeal to for more money. Hmm. The Abbey is in such a bad state. There must be someone the Abbot can appeal to. I mean, I don't think sitting down with Otto is the way to go. He's leading a revolution. <laughs> Who, the Pope? The Duke of Bavaria may lend him military aid, but money is unlikely. Well, then it's the Abbot's problem to fix. The peasants don't need to bear the brunt of it. Oh, man, this is a cheese-eating conversation. Oh, <laughs> apple pie. Let's eat our dessert first. Oh, shit, I forgot the voice. We are sympathetic to what's happening here. We saw it. I don't remember the voice. God damn it. We saw it all through Swabia. Peasants are suffering. It's true, but I worry about what will happen in Tassing. Peasants. Ah! Huh? Oh, I'm fine. Peasants are no match for the soldiers of the Swabian League. What's the Swabian League? Mercenaries? Soldiers for hire? They rally for coin, not, co not for cause. Can't speak to their motives as we tried to stay far away from them, but they're intimidating even at a distance. The peasants aren't careful. 
contestant could draw the wrong sort of attention. I know that... I know that Otto and the peasants are taking a risk, but I believe Otto will keep things peaceful. Ooh. Anyway, it's not the Swabian League we have to worry about, but the soldiers of the Duke of Bavaria. Bavaria! Prince Bishop has the church's authority, but the Duke's lands surround Tassing and Kearsau. Ooh, that is a white bread statement. <gasps> um, I'm just going to awkwardly change the subject here. Klaus, I'm sorry for showing up yesterday without writing. You had every right to be angry. I've been traveling so much. I miss most of your letters. And so much time passed when I finally heard about Bert and Marie. I'm sorry. Man, everyone's sad. Ah. Uh, ooh, that is a... <laughs> that's another pottage moment. Wait, you can't see it. Yeah, just totally, every time, every time things go awkward, I'm just like. <laughs> ah, poof. Ow. Oh. oh, this is it. This is it. Oh, no, I was afraid of this. We can't travel now. This is all my fault. We should have left Basil earlier. I love you, Benjamin, but be quiet. I don't care. I need help. Yes, we need a midwife. Is there one who would accept Rachel? Um, Agnes! She's a Tassing's midwife. Could you get her? Klaus? <clears throat> yes, I should get her. Agnes has delivered every child in Tassing as long as I can remember. She would never turn any woman away. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Klaus. You're a mensch. Enough with the thanks. Give me the midwife! <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Andreas, you've, you're forgiven. This is emergency. Casper, it was good to have you over, but you both have to leave. Of course. Good luck, Rachel. Eh, thank you. I'll need it. Damn! She's going into labor at the dinner table. I'll go fetch Agnes. Thank you for joining us, Andreas. Oh, almost right. You should go see the bonfire preparations in the town commons. You missed them on your last visit. Klaus! Oh, I'm going. Thank you, Klaus. We'll be going now. Take care. All right. Preparing the bonfire. This looks nice. Everyone seems to be working hard for the bonfire tonight. The commons look festive, decorated like this. Look at all the flowers, Master, and the bonfire is huge. <laughs> there goes Klaus in the background. So cute. How's the fire coming? Those logs work out all right for you, Andrus? Coming along as it's been nearly finished. It's all in place, Otto. Good, good. All right, everyone, remember, after the bonfire tonight, we celebrate as usual. We will all gather in the woods, and the women will collect herbs as tradition demands. Otto, the abbot has forbidden harvesting in the forest. Please, for everyone's sake, reconsider your actions. Thank you, Father, but the abbot's order goes against God's law. The forest belongs to all of us, as do all of its game and fowl and fish. He cannot claim ownership over that which God, the Lord, <clears throat> gave us to hold in common. No, I'm sorry, Father. We'll proceed as planned. Dassing has never let anything get in the way of our St. John's customs, as long as I can remember. We won't start now. And remember, tomorrow I will show you proof that as sure as the sun turns around the earth, and our saints, God and our saints are with us. Damn, Otto's starting some shit. Good day, Andres. Hello, Brother Waslov. You look upset at Otto's announcement. Is everything all right? 
Otto is becoming more aggressive in his defiance of the abbot. Father Gerno will not take this news well. Who's telling? Otto just announced his plan in the commons, and Tassing is a small town. Of course the abbot will hear about it. Hmm, fair point. But why is the abbot so angry about it? Didn't you just hear Father Thomas, Andreas? Clears out. The abbot declared the woods off limits. Anyway, it's not for me to say. I'm sure the abbot will tell uh, you more. He sent me with an invitation for you to dine with him tonight. I'm sure the father will want to discuss the situation over supper. Whew. You're kidding. What is the abbot thinking you can pry out of me now? I'd watch your tone around the abbot, Andreas. Will you go or not? Fine, I'll attend. Does the invitation extend to Casper as well? <laughs> Casper, my impressionable young lad? I'm sorry, Andreas. But Father Abbot has asked you to come to his house alone. Whew. Please tell the abbot I'll see him in the evening. <clears throat> well, guess I'll see what all the fuss is about. I'll meet you back at the Golden Hand after dinner, all right? Can I help set up the festival decorations while you're with the abbot? Yes, but be back before sundown, all right? Yes, thank you, master. I'll see you later. Man, we are just cruising through these days. Holy moly. <laughs> Welcome in, y'all. Thank you for that raid. Hey, Guild Superior. How are you doing? Hello, raiders. Let's give you a shout out here. Hello all, I am insight checked. Where are you guys up to? Thank you for that follow, Forest. Doing swell, how are you? I am good. I this is my first time streaming in a in a bit. Um this game at least. It requires a lot of talking and I haven't been feeling up to it. I've been sick, so I'm like actually really, really happy to be back and, and feeling, feeling marginal. <laughs> so it's good, it's good. You guys are playing some Shade Song Dragon Bane Homebrew. Oh, hell yeah. That's awesome. I hope you had a wonderful game. Thank you for that rain. Um, so y'all, I'm Insight Checked. I run narrative video games on Thursdays, and then I run actual play TTRPG stuff. Um, we do First Fridays, which is um, an actual play first Friday of every month that has a guest GM. Um, we play different systems, we have a little chaos, we raise money for charity. Um, and then yeah, we do other actual play series throughout, throughout the year. Um, I have a crafting series where folks learn to play RPGs and, and crafts. Um, we pair that together, like a fine wine and cheese kind of a vibe. Um, so yeah, if you like RPG stuff, give me a follow. Would love to hang out with y'all again. Week season, this game looks gorgeous. I always enjoy watching. Good, good. Yes, I love the art in this game. Um, so spoilers ahead if you haven't played. Um, we are in, I think it's the second arc. Um, you can tell from my fancy hat that I am older, Andreas. Um, and yeah, we're... I, I would say the first act was all about closing in on a murder. And this act... I, I feel like there's a peasant revolution brewing that I may or may not foment. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks for raiding in, y'all. Hope, uh, hope your stream was fantastic. I hope to catch the VOD. I know y'all have a lot of, um, a lot of series going on over there, so all good stuff. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what this is, but I love it. This is like, if the Ren Fair was this, just this, <laughs> it would be everything. Regita, nice to see you. Till, fucking old as shit. 
Werner, you awful, awful man. Master Andreas, you'd best not keep the abbot waiting. Casper! Do you see this display? It's amazing. Go on, we'll meet up after supper. All right, don't get into trouble. Casper's gonna get into trouble, isn't he? Andreas? <laughs> Forrest, always up for a good book at a hat dance. <laughs> oh man. It's hard to walk away from, isn't it? All right, time to go into everyone's house when they're not here. Okay, so why does it let me go into places where there's nothing to do? It's like, it feeds my curiosity. It makes me want to go all around the town, poking my head in everyone's house just to see if there's anything cool. I'm not gonna do that, but I really want to. We'll just do one more. Hello? Child. Klaus. All right, see, this is not paying off. All right, we won't keep the abbot waiting. Or will we? Hello? Is there anything worthwhile in here? Nope, still no, okay. Damn. Breaking into the Mueller house? Casually? Ball! Oh, okay. Thought Paul was gonna reveal some secrets. Else! You kept woman! Oh, no. Alright. I'm taking the hint. We'll just... Go do the thing they want us to do, that's fine. Maybe we'll be rewarded with a cutscene on the way. Alright, dining with the abbot. What could go wrong? Father Gerno, it's been a while. God bless you, Andreas. Glad to see you rescind, received. <laughs> Freudian slip. I'm glad to see you received my invitation. Are you ready to eat? Yes. Good. <laughs> God, this is gonna be so <laughs> awkward. Andreas, thank you for coming to dinner. I thought you didn't ever want to see me at Kearsau again, Father. What changed? Yes, well, the Lord calls us to forgive, even when that might be difficult. I think it's high time we reconciled, Master Mailer. Please sit and we will pray together. Prayer, 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 prayer. And prayer... Lord, direct each of us here toward your wisdom. Prayer, 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 prayer. Prayer. Amen. Amen. Brother Waslov was indeed prompt in delivering my message. I'm surprised you deigned to drop by at all. You have done quite well for yourself, after all. It's good to see your time at Kearsaw was not squandered. You even look the part of the famous artist now. In case you guys can't tell, this guy's the bad guy. What have you been doing in recent years after leaving such a mess in Tassing? Oh boy. Um. Okay, so we could be a master artist. We could have a commission. We did go to Aragon. Ooh, or do we blow him off? Let's, let's brag, let's brag a little. We went to Spain. Yes, I've heard the Inquisition has had a difficult time with the many Jews and Muslims fleeing the country. Ugh. Oh, God. 
I understand the edict of expulsion, Father, but the Inquisition is brutal in its methods. The Church and Crown have a duty to ensure the safety of the kingdom, Andreas. I'm sure the Inquisition is using exactly as much force as needed. He says over a table of butchered meats. You, ugh, this guy. Of course, of course. Why did you really ask me here, Abbott? <laughs> Forrest, yeah, definitely the bad guy. Yep. Yeah, no. In truth, I had hoped to discuss the rising tensions between the Abbey and the townspeople. Playing catch up, um, the townspeople are tired of the abbot's shit. He has taken away their lands. He has taken away their homes. If they have a death in the family, instead of going to the widow, it goes to him. Uh, so they're starting some shit, perhaps tonight. I'd like to clarify the situation for you, Andreas. Oh yeah, let's, let's start some shit. Of course, just like you clarified that Piero was guilty all those years ago. Throw your fork down. Clatter it on the table. This is precisely why I asked you here. I am trying to prevent another terrible situation like that. I believe you're, I believe you've only heard from one side of the issue, Andreas. Otto's little speeches about taxes don't account for the entire situation. Why demand such high taxes then, Father? Oh, what do we say with that? What kind of a bite is that? I don't know what this is, but we'll take a bite of it while we're being sassy. With the scriptorium closure, the taxes are necessary to make up for the lost income. Who do we offer advice? Why not ask the bishop for help? Just because you decided to close the scriptorium doesn't... Yeah, you know what? Just because you decided to close the scriptorium doesn't mean the townsfolk should suffer. Don't put the fault on me, Andreas. Ooh, I might sneeze. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't put the fault on me, Andreas. <sighs> and that delightful sneeze was not my tone. <laughs> Don't let it distract you. These taxes are a direct consequence of your actions after you accused Ferenc. He managed the scriptorium. I did kind of kill that guy. Would you rather the brothers suffer instead, Andreas? The Abbey relies on taxes to survive. The townsfolk know taxes have risen and fallen in the past and have shouldered the obligation willingly. Brother Guy has gone over the expenses himself. Brother Guy is his little shit henchman. Raising taxes is the best way to cover these costs. Hmm. But what about prohibiting the peasants from using the forest? That's a new restriction. Ooh, we'll take a large bite of pheasant on that one. The forest belongs to the abbey, and the peasants have no right to use it. Legally, it's theft. You're being a pedantic ass. I'm upholding the law, Andreas. The monastery needs revenue and the townsfolk have not been charitable. They have nothing left to give. Have you seen the Gertners? They can barely afford bread. Perhaps you ought to be more charitable with the Gertners if you are so moved by their plight. Have you no pity for them yourself, father? I'm more upset to hear the townsfolk have no pity for us. Hoo hoo hoo. I hear they will continue their disobedience by collecting herbs on St. John's Eve. The whole town knows I've forbidden it. <laughs> Joaquin, look at all that expensive food. Yeah, there's a freaking pie on the table. This is the first pie I've seen in this game. The matter is grave, and I will excommunicate anyone who defies my order. That's insane. You may not like my methods, Andreas, but order must be restored in Tassing. All right, we're taking a bite of the plum pudding, and the plum is just going to go all over the table, and I'm just going to, like, grind it into the tablecloth with my thumb. 
Like with that kind of face. <laughs> Remaining impartial will be impossible as long as you are in town. Support me in ending this foolish rebellion. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. And Holy Ghost, you have a reputation in town, Andreas. You're a successful man, and the townsfolk believe they are like you. I'd like you to convince the other townsfolk, the printer, for example, that this uprising is not in their best interests. Guys, I think I've found my new passion in life is to just read evil monologues. <laughs> This is how I am a GM, because I just love evil monologuing. <laughs> the rest of the town will follow, and the peasants have no chance to resist. We can end this peacefully. <laughs> Thanks for that follow, Denethor. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Okay, we're not understanding his point of view, so we're just going to scroll right past that one. Um, no, this asshole is not going to negotiate with peasants. I want no part in this either way. Nope, no neutral. All right, all right, we're between the bottom two. Uh, I won't help you or damn your plan and damn you, father. <sighs> I feel like we need to put this to a vote. Where's all my stuff? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do a good old fashioned vote here. A poll rather, all right. So I will, I will put an other option. I, my favorite are the last two. So I won't help you, oops, or, or damn you. Or other, we'll, we'll go back to the drawing board if, if you like one of the other ones. Um, okay, so spend some channel points. I think you can stack the deck on this if you wanted to like tip the scales on one of the answers. Okay, so let's see if that worked. Did that work? Oh, the question, which one? Which one? Okay, you should see the poll. So vote, vote for your answer. I feel like this one will take us squarely on the side of the peasants, but won't, won't get a rise out of him. And this one, obviously, is a lot of damnation on an abbot. Um, and maybe you like another one. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely not going sycophant. I don't know. Democracy, though. <laughs> if, if, we, if we revisit, we revisit. <clears throat> Denethor, ah, yes, the evil monologuing. Are you a GM as well? <laughs> Do you partake in the evil monologue? All right, let's see. <laughs> Oh, chat, I can always count on you. Uh, damn you. Yes. All right. Let's do it. Damn your plan. And damn you, father. <laughs> and I spray the plum pudding again. Honestly, Andreas, I've invited you in and asked a genuine request. And this is how you respond? As though chat has pushed you into some kind of vitriolic phase? Perhaps I should have known better, but I was hoping. Please, take more time to think about it. I apologize, we must conclude for now. I must excuse myself, I am expected to lead a service at Copline! <gasps> Okay, this is gonna be a lot of catch-up lore. There's, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Think on what we discussed, Andreas. I trust you can find your way out. I'm off to my doom. I will, Father Abbot, good night. Shit. Okay. Okay, let me, I gotta catch you up on the lore. All right. So, 
This is not my first murder, by the way. I have a experience, seen a murder seven years ago in this very abbey. I thought I caught the killer. I did a little investigating. Turns out the person who sent these ominous notes from seven years ago sent me another note when I came back into town. Now, in the same handwriting, just to really mess with my head, the last time someone was murdered here seven years ago, there was a, um, I forget what they call her, like a seer, um, not a nun, but I don't know. She lives a cloistered life, literally kept in a jail cell uh, because she has visions. It's like, oh shit, would never go for this. It's not okay. Um, but she has visions and sometimes she goes into a trance and says things. And the last time there was a murder, she predicted it. She called it out. She called out the time. She called out the place. So seven years later, I see her, middle of the night, walking around like I do. And she calls out Compline, which is the middle of the night. And this guy, this guy is leading a Compline mass tonight. He's going to die. He's going to die. Who do I tell? How do I? Ah, what do we do? (laughs) Joaquin, purple ink, the most expensive color at the time. Yes! Yes, and it's a very fancy handwriting, too. What do we do? Anyway, I don't know if she's in here to show her to you. What is her name? Amelie? How come she's not in here? Is she a figment of my imagination? <laughs> okay, um, hmm. can't show her to you, but she, I swear, she has premonitions. All right. <clears throat> okay. Compline. Compline death. What do we do? What do we do? Oh, God. What do we do? It's Compline right now. It's Compline right now. Oh, what do we tell? Uh, sound the alarm. Guy. God damn it, guy. Uh, maybe I could tell someone in the convent. Mother Illuminata. Ah, damn it. She's not going to talk to me. Uh, No one wants to talk to me. Ah, There's room with nothing in it. Guys, I can't. uh, I'm not going to do the thing where I wander around in every room. Am I? Am I just going to go to bed and let this guy get murdered? I had dinner with him last. I had dinner with him last. Oh, man. He's leading a mass. Is he going to do that in here? Mathow. Damn it. All right. I think we need to go to the forest. (sighs) Because that's where they're going to disobey the abbot. And even if he's leading a mass at Compline, he knows, he knows what's going down tonight. Here I am. Wait, is the festival tonight or tomorrow? (laughs) Shit, I'm all alone in the forest. Oh, God. Gotta go. Smokey? Smokey, are you coming to the festival? Evening, Master Miller. You're not taking part in the festivities? I thought, I thought I was. I thought they'd be here. I came to ask you the same. I didn't see you at the bonfire. Imagine it'd be a great chance to gather gossip. Ah, plenty of gossip to go around if one keeps their eyes open in the forest tonight. Hmm? It's an enchanted evening. As for your question, I get into fire and smoke as it is. <laughs> I've been inhaling this shit for seven years. And decent folk don't like to associate with my kind, even as they like the charcoal, they hate the burner. This game is such good line. <laughs> Joaquin, I entirely missed this character the first seven years. I kept bothering Smokey. But I never, like, dined with Smokey or did anything. I just, like, really wanted to talk to Smokey. 
Andreas is having some PTSD right now. <laughs> Other than Endris. He occasionally comes by, but I guess he has to keep good relations for his trade. Or maybe he likes you, dude. People avoid you? Even on such a night as this? Well, fine. They're not a, as bad as usually, but truth be told, I don't, I don't, I don't really care. I've made my peace with the matter. For me, it's a night like most others. I prefer staying sober and observing the townsfolk. Easier to get all the gossip for the years to come, you know? <laughs> I love the idea of this character. He is straight up just an old hermit outcast that lives in the woods next to a burning pile of charcoal. And yet he's like, for some reason, the town gossip. It's so cute. Besides, I reckon I'm growing too old for mischief. Best let others run around in their silly costumes. I think you still have some youth in you, Smokey, under that bushy beard. Ah, I like the sun rises in its highest point every year, so my back grows ever more crooked. Ah, but I appreciate you coming by. I wish you a pleasant evening, Master Miller. Until later, Smokey. <laughs> you crack me up. Smokey, you're my favorite. All right. To the town. I think we have to see this through. Oh, here's where she lives. Um, Amelie, the one with the visions. She lives in this little jail cell. <laughs> she... Okay, this is going to sound even weirder. She is digging her own grave in there. That's all I'm going to say. Like, that's that's what she told me. This lady is, she's hardcore. The hell are you, Thomas? All right. Everyone better be in this town square. There we go. Hey, the gang's all here. <laughs> Just like they practiced. <laughs> so cute. Casper, you're right where I left you. Master Andreas, look at how big the bonfire is. The decorations are so fancy. St. John's Eve Festival is a big event for Tassing. I missed it last time I was here. Haven't you been to a festival like this, Casper? No, I've never seen anything like this. Can I stay at the bonfire and see the costumes and watch them collect herbs, Master Mailer, please? Oh, man. Casper's gonna get killed if I tell him to stay. But if I tell him not to stay, he's probably gonna sneak out and get killed anyway. All right. Kid can make his own choices. <laughs> All right, but follow along. Don't get in their way. I'm too tired for the festival. I think I'll just turn in for the night. Hope you don't die, buddy. Yes! Promise I won't make trouble. I'll see you tomorrow, master. Shit. I just see what Casper's fate, y'all. Otilia. Well, well. Andreas the painter. Good to see you too, Otilia. Hmm, when did I say it was good to see you? The only reason I remember you is because you bothered me about that rat, the Baron. So Laura Drop, she was one of my suspects. She does hate the Baron, the previously seven years ago murdered guy. I cleared her. Only, only one person died because of my negligence. Two, I guess, the Baron and the person I pinned as the murderer, and then it wasn't actually the murderer, it's fine. Anyway, no time to talk now, fancy man. It's time to call the fire. To the fire. Call? Our demands, Mama Perchta. Noose, our deck and quest guard party. Ve, ve, noose clamanti. Ha, ha, ha. All right, I'm gonna go. 
<laughs> Enjoy the evening, Andreas. Perfect witchy vibes. But if you want my advice, stay out of the woods tonight. And don't, don't tell your young, innocent boy, Casper, to go into the woods because he's going to die. <laughs> great, great. Thanks, Otilia. I should have talked to you first. Great. Casper, go to bed. Go to bed, Casper! <laughs> Andreas. This guy's an asshole. Salutations, you must be the illustrious artist. Baltasar Isenkov, pleasure to meet you, but call me Baltas, please, it's much more familiar. Master Andreas Miller, pleased to meet you. Yes, you're Miller, we all know. Let's cut the long winded pleasantries. What brings you to Tassing, Baltas? Baltazar here decided to stay in the godforsaken town for whatever unfathomable reason after his cart broke. It's not unfathomable. I enjoy the calming vistas, the people dressed up like cornstalks clapping barefoot. Peace and quiet. It has been neither lately. Uh, and what is it that you do, Baltus? He's an inventor of sorts. I make all manner of mechanical contraptions for all the use of this. Why would you hang out with this guy? He's just, he is sitting next to you talking shit about every decision you've made. The mind of the inventor exists to create, to build, to go one step further. One step further toward the garbage heap, huh? It makes sense you'd also be rude to your friends, Werner. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> yes. Perhaps you'll find your friend yourself someday, Master Mailer. I did. He died. He, he was murdered. Andreas, have you had a chance to look around town tonight? I imagine the sights could be inspiring to your artistic mind. What do you mean? Well, look at the peasantry ingenuity on display. The bonfire itself, for example built to allow the air and the heat to flow through at a great speed and how it roars. It's a clever construction, but Otto's a clever man. Look at him there with his little family. As the kids say, death flags. <clears throat> it's a feat almost worthy of a university degree. These people have natural traditions and they've managed to figure out many clever things without even the most cursory education. So snobby. It is knowledge that hails from preceding generations, lived experience passed along the chain of time. Not quite the knowledge of a rigorously educated mind, perhaps, but nonetheless useful. <clears throat> um, I'm just gonna go with you don't need a university education to be smart. You didn't in medieval times, and you don't now. <laughs> of course you would say that. Neither of you know these people like I do. God has assigned them their place in the order of the world for good reason. <laughs> there is some merit in learning from the peasants, even you, Werner, given their understanding of herbal remedies. Their traditions are profane. Consider the Eve of St. John, tainted by their pagan rituals. It's an affront to Christ. St. Eligius warned against precisely this nearly a thousand years ago. Where'd this newfound piety come from, Werner? Don't pretend you know anything about me. I've been on the pilgrimage to Achen. Achen? Ancient city built around thermal baths. Houses the remains of Charlemagne as well as other relics. I have visited the Merenshrin and stood in the presence of the holy relics. To be in the presence of St. John the Baptist beheading cloth was an experience I will never forget. <clears throat> I'm glad you had an experience. Your family must be proud. They are. Grand! Now this time we return to the festival. We're here to celebrate. I'll let you continue with your evening then. Good night. Inventor? Asshole? Very good night. Oh, 
And do come by my workshop. Woohoo! We've got a tinker. I would love to exchange ideas. It would be my pleasure. Splendid until then. Mailer. <laughs> Guy. <laughs> An experience. Yep. Peter, how are you doing? Why, Martin, look who it is. Good evening, Andreas. Andreas, you're staying for the festival, I hope. Of course he's staying. Who wouldn't miss this, especially after you burly boys built such a beautiful bonfire? A burly boy like me would do anything for you, Dove. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> Should we stare at them blankly? <laughs> oh no, they're so cute. Martin and I had some beef seven years ago. I was really mean to him for a time, and then I got over it. Look at him now, taking care of his family, not being killed for a crime he didn't commit. It's great. The food, the fires, the dancing, it really is a night to enjoy. It's to honor the anniversary of the birth of the Blessed John, a vigil for he who prepared the way. Yes, and we'd like everyone to have a good time and good mood and good food. As a hermit who wandered in the desert living off of locusts and wild honey, probably wouldn't agree. I'd like to live off some wild honey myself if you catch my meaning. Martin, you scamp. Uh, <clears throat> so the thing where everyone's going to die, are you guys going to go to the forest? No, I'm not really looking for trouble. There's enough of that going around. Even though you supported him earlier during his speech? He speaks his mind on what's important, but like I've said, I have no personal interest to provoke the abbot. We are God-fearing people, Andreas. Yes, yes, this is exactly what I was wondering. When I first saw them, Martin, Otto was asking Martin to do something. What did you first argue about with Otto anyway when I first saw you in the meadow? of note. Andreas, please, enough of this. We're here to celebrate. And Martin and I will dance until our legs begin to waver. Isn't that right? Would not miss it for the world. Ah, more death flags. That's delightful. Hope you have a great evening. Hope you don't die. Stay alive. You as well, Andreas. Until later. Um, who else? Who else? Who can we talk to? Till? Eh... Ill Peter, eh. What is this bonfire situation? Maybe I have to stand in front of it. Carl? Who the hell are you? Evening, Andreas. Hey, hey, Carl. Say, how do you like the bonfire? We built it nice this year, big and sturdy. It's fine, Carl. Good old Carl with the spoon in your hat. <laughs> I know we can't compare to where you're from, but we still give it our all in celebration. On uh, the light, who prepared Lord, 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 Lord. Anton, you remember Andreas Mailer, the master artist? Who was Carl and Anton? Yeah, I've seen him around town. Son, be polite. Ah, yeah, hello, Master Mailer, how are you? Uh, I am well. Thank you, young man. <laughs> Anton's a good boy, but let me tell you. A bit of a rascal, as you can see. He's got a good head and a good heart. Likes to hide it, though. He's basically like the new Martin. Like, you remember what Martin was like seven years ago? This is now Anton's thing. Ah, Dad, will you stop? Ha, easy to rile you up, just like your mother. Who the hell are these people? How is Helena? Who are they? She'll join us later. She went with Martha to dip their toes in the stream and to pick some flowers for the garlands and the wreaths. Oh, y'all people can't be in the forest. No, the abbot. It's important to hold traditions. Oh, God. Uh, you're right, especially with the times we're having. Besides, maybe Martha and Helena will come across the blossom of a fern out there. What's so funny about that? Ferns don't flower. That means no power to speak with animals for you, boy. Oh, cool. They're pagans. I love it. 
Uh, don't worry, Anton. You can always get a garland with St. John's Wort to ward off any demons and evil spirits. Yeah! Get that, Anton? Make sure to keep your eyes open for those spirits walking the earth tonight. Lore drop. I saw a spirit seven years ago. By the aqueduct. Evil spirits and demons. I've never seen any myself. And you won't have to if we're careful, my boy. The bonfire will frighten them off with the help of the Lord. That's why we have the feasts and celebrations. Speaking of, what do you think of the festival so far, Anton? The boy I've never met before. It's fine, I guess. I like the fires. When they're lit, the mountains get to twinkle like the stars. I don't know. I don't like when people get drunk and rowdy as the night goes on. They get into fights and all. Like... For example, I would never tell a young squire of mine to stay at the festival while I went to bed. I think it's very dangerous. Would never do that. Uh, ooh, anyone in particular? Well, um, not as much lately, but Martin used to get in trouble. Anton's got a good eye, Martin. Uh, Martin's been a solid fellow once he came back, but sometimes he drinks too much. He's calmed down lately. You know, he used to be kind of a shit. Language, boy, doesn't... God doesn't look kindly on blasphemy. But those are your words, Dad. Best you don't quote me. Quote the scripture instead. <laughs> it's better for your soul. You listen to your father, Anton. I will do. Jesus. <laughs> hey, what did I just say? Don't let your mother catch you with that mouth. All right, let's get back to the festivities. I have no idea who the fuck you people are. It was a pleasure. Until later, Andreas. Hope you remember us next time. <laughs> Who are you people? Anton? How is that? There you are. Anton, son of Carl. Great. Okay, Carl. Uh, Carl. Head of the Pfeiffer family, mid-40s, straight brown hair, strong. <laughs> this is the most generic description. What's his name? Carl what? Carl Pfeiffer? Pfeiffers? Are they even on here? Who are these people? I don't believe you. I've met them before. Oh, man. I thought I was getting to know people. Are they the new inn keepers? Do they, do they own the golden hand? They probably would have said that. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, this is a lovely conversation. Oh, there we go. Bonfire is much simpler than the one in Nuremberg, but this is all pretty soon. All right, I don't really want to talk to Till or Ill Peter. Ill Peter's all about paganism, so I'm sure he's loving this. There was a farm, Forrest says. There's always a farm. Oh, maybe they're in the south or something. Flowers. I'm, I'm sure they're legitimate townspeople, Tori. Ill Peter, what's up? Veronica, good evening. Nice to see you. Grandpa, look who it is. Me! Oh, the artist, you're still around. Well, I thought to stay in and enjoy the festivities until I go to bed and doom you all. Eh, I call this a festival? Eh. You haven't seen nothing yet. You're not going to tell the story again, are you? You kids need to learn it by heart, else perched I will run you down. Ah, oh, is this about the wild hunt? Yes, it draws near. Bleh. Heed my warning. Grandpa, you're getting agitated again. It's not good for your health. Nonsense. I can outlive any bastard out there. So, ah, uh, where was I? The wild hunt? Yes, did you bring your... Mask? Uh, no, sorry. Bah! Put your life in danger for all I care. The masks are to protect us as we banish witches and spirits into Perchta's path. 
she punishes all humans. Humans she finds in the woods on St. John's Eve. Why would you go to the woods? Since only witches are out in the wilderness. I'm getting a lot of mixed signals here. I guess if you're not a pagan believer anymore, you wouldn't fear the woods. You'd go to collect herbs for like the Christian stuff, maybe? <clears throat> Anyone caught will be turned into animals. No one but a priest can turn them back. Oh no, to be brought low to a mere beastly existence. Veronica, I'm serious. A grim fate. Eh. Stay indoors tonight. If you want to come outside, stay with the light of St. John's fire. At least St. Satya blesses the herbs in the forest this night. And the women will gather the herbs, because that's what we do. It's medieval times, regardless of that bastard abbot. It's certainly important to stockpile some for the winter. Thank you for teaching... Oh, hi, it's me. Thank you for teaching me more about local traditions. Meh. 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 Big Yorg. Huh? You grab some of those ashes with you after the bonfire has died down. Fine. What are the ashes for? Meh, yeah. it's just spread across the garden. It was sure a good harvest. Figures you city people don't know shit. Don't be like that, Grandpa. <laughs> now that story time is over, how are you enjoying the evening so far, Andreas? Uh, nah, I've been very enlightening. We've spoken to a few people. Everyone's got a lot of, lot of cutscenes. Best time to spend with your friends. Have you heard anything interesting? Bad gossip, you two are like that burner in the forest. Smokey! Smokey, my favorite forest gossip. Always nosy about other people, and yet completely ostracized from society. Um, I've also been invited to have dinner with the abbot, which I did already, so I guess the talking never stops. Can't say I'm exceedingly sure about it, given the animosity between us, even though I definitely already talked to him. Yeah, but the bastard can rot for all I care. A thief in monk's robes full of hollow words. <sighs> Maybe you can talk some sense into Father Guerno, even though you already talked to him. He's not making it easy for any of us. It's not like we're asking for much. I'll do what I can, even though I've already talked to him. All we can ask, even though you've already talked to him. Meh. Yes, I shouldn't keep you then. You have an important meeting to attend that you've already been to. You're right. I can't keep the abbot waiting too long, even though I already saw him until later. Oh, we've taken a lot of your time, haven't we? Don't forget to enjoy the night celebrations. Ominous foreshadowing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I think we've talked to everyone, except for Till, I don't actually care for Till. <clears throat> so quiet away from the uh, celebrations. Well, I think we need to see the forest again, perhaps? Hey, Legion Grey. No beanie? Ah, uh, not tonight. Tonight is a hair night. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome in. All right. Well, if nothing is happening in the forest tonight, I don't know. Maybe we'll come back. No one seems to be here yet. I feel like people are supposed to be, like, bathing in the waterfall, and I don't know. Alright. Well, let's go to bed. Completely innocuous night, nothing bad happening in the forest. Everything's fine. <clears throat> Legion, I can never remember who I agreed to have dinner with. It's an actual issue. Yes. I, we're in book two. Um, book one, we had a lot more dinner decisions to make, and I swear to God, there's one VOD where I was like, okay, I know who I'm dining with. I'm totally going to dine with them. I, it was, I think I was trying to dine with Martin's wife, 
And I accidentally dined with like his aunt or something. Like I got really distracted and I I thought I like had the right person. And I just like confidently walk up and like immediately I'm like, yes, let's eat together. And then as we're sitting at the table, I'm like, uh, where the hell is that person I'm supposed to be eating with? Oh, it was such a mess. This one though, I've been very linear with who I dine with. Like they, they've been really kind of railroading me on this, on this leg of it. Which is, is like actually very comforting. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to sleep, and then we'll be awoken at what is it? Well, it's compline now, so that means someone's dying. Hey, buddy, why aren't you at the thing? Samuel, why are you just always here with your sword? It's very suspicious. Legion, yeah, the game doesn't forget it unless you know. <laughs> hmm. Forest awkward. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Great, 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 great. This is good. I left my young squire out there. People are going to go to the forest. The abbot suspicious. Viciously highlighted the words of the seer. Ah, uh, yeah, this is good. This is time for bed. Yeah, get some rest. Everything's fine. Go to sleep. Ooh, dreamland. <laughs> For us, nothing bad. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Everything's good. Dreamland's a good sign. So, I've seen this maze before. The, uh, the Virgin Mary was holding this symbol, I think. Still not sure why. Oh, dude, am I actually supposed to be trying to find the way in? <laughs> the last time I was in this maze, they just kept cutscening me. Okay, fine. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the cutscene of encouragement. Sabine, my wife. What is it? Let's just wait. Let's not yell at Sabine in my dream. Come home. I will. Soon. You're lying. Sometimes I think you must despise me. But maybe it's worse than that. Maybe I'm nothing to be regarded at all. What am I to you now? An annoyance? A bother? A nuisance to be ignored while you lead another life in Barcelona? Was there ever an ounce of love in your heart for me? Do we love Sabine or not? I feel like we've never talked shit about her, but we've never been like really into her either. I feel like an ounce. There was definitely at least an ounce there. Of course there was, but no longer. I hate talking to you when you're like this. You hate everything about me. I don't hate you. You don't love me. It doesn't matter. Go back to your work. The only thing that makes you happy. This house is so lonely without him. Stop. The presence would only amplify the grief. Stop! Leave me alone. Leave me alone with the memory of him. Why are you talking about me in the third person? Stop! Just leave me alone. Just for one night. One night where I don't have to dream about him. 
Who are we talking about? Are we talking about the Baron? Please. Thank you. Whew. That was intense. August? I, I know you aren't going to say anything. Forrest is a kid. How is this kid? I said I didn't have a kid. You never say anything. What is this? This is like backstory that I don't know about. Hold on. Hold on. I'm writing this down. Okay. Okay, I'm I am pretty sure that I told Otto I didn't have any kids. Who what was that his name? Sabine? I don't know, I just made that up. August? The kid who doesn't say anything? I couldn't do anything for you. Who's August? Oh boy. Sorry, August. Oh shit. Plague. I'm so tired, August. Do you get tired where you are? Did I have a kid? Last time I saw you, I said goodnight to you. I couldn't come to the bed, so I just stood in the doorway. I just stood in the dark. You didn't say anything back, so I said it again. I don't know how long I stood there, just waiting for you to say goodnight. Oh, this is whole, so heartbreaking. You still look the same age to me. I wonder if I'll ever forget your face. Oh, do I remember your mother as she is? Wait, wait, what is, what is, I'm so confused. My betrothed, we got married. I'm trying to remember what I told Otto. I thought I was just married with my lady back in Nuremberg and I didn't have a kid and... Oh man, is this my secret backstory? I remember loving her. Can you ever picture someone clearly? If you love them? <laughs> Blake season. I love that you actually act these lines out. It's great. Thank you. Foresight. Sounds like it. This is my secret backstory. I loved you, little boy. I loved you so much. Sometimes I wish I could die so I wouldn't feel it anymore. Holy shit, Andreas. Holy shit. But I can't. So I retrace my steps every night and I find my way back to her. Back to you. I love you, August. Good night. God damn. Holy shit. Oh shit. So this is the first place that we ever went as a character. It's a dream sequence. We had a few personas that informed our decisions about things. Sometimes when we talk to people in real life, we have like a little thought bubble dialogue that allows us to to talk to these folks. But it was like a full court before. It did not look like this. What happened to this place? Where's Prester John? And where are Socrates and, and Saint Grobian? And Grodian wasn't on the ship. Grobian wasn't on the ship of fools. 
Won't you answer me? No thoughts for Beatrice. You are Beatrice, aren't you? Once, I was a voice of caution, of prudence. And now? More and less than caution, the ache of doubt that stiffens to paralysis. Paralysis that breeds despair. Melancholia. The Smashing Pumpkins album. <laughs> what happened to you? What happens to you happens to us. The foundations of this city are still moored within the ocean of your mind. Its court does not rule your mind. Your mind rules the court. Once reason, curiosity, and the foolishness of youth dwelt under the aegis of your intellect. I am all that remains, the melancholy of life's autumn. <laughs> but if it's only June... <laughs> Oh, damn. Um, we're not going to go for the Marvel line. How did it come to this? You have turned your gaze to your own dark center. You know the courses of your own life. You know how the choices you've made have brought you here. What am I supposed to do about it now? I had a whole secret backstory and I literally just found out about it. <clears throat> Change your life. Wait. I shouldn't be here. I needed to help someone. Is Casper all right? Is Casper all right? I definitely told him to go into a dangerous situation. Is he, is he cool? Ah, so your thoughts aren't entirely turned inward. There is still something of you that cares for others in spite of your melancholy. Perhaps there's still hope for us. Wake up, Andreas. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. I would like to think that if I told Casper to come to bed, he still would have snuck out. I really, really hope that's the case. Otherwise, I am a negligent artist. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay, well, we've opened up a whole other book. This is the book of St. John's Eve. So that's really interesting. Um, unfortunately, it is late, and so I won't be able to play any further tonight. And I don't want, I don't even want to step out of this little room. So there's no spoilers um <clears throat> but I had a really delightful time playing um it's been a while since I played this game and so thank you all for whoops nope not stepping out of the room nope not me uh yeah thank you all for hanging out um I had a really lovely time just chatting and um I was I'm so glad that we had some fun with the dramatic monologues and yeah, thank you so much for those raids. Thank you for the raid, um, Guild Superior. And yeah, let me do one more shout out for you. I think it must have cooled down by now. Oops. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for bringing your community in. Um, yeah, and if y'all wanna hang out again, we'll be here next Thursday, continuing this actual play, actual play, wow. Continuing this um, playthrough or this let's play of Pentiment. Um, and then, yeah, if you like TTRPG stuff, we do actual plays on this channel, too. Oof. Man. It's been a while since I've streamed. This is, this is good. This is good stuff. Hi, Pippi. My dogs are coming in here. Even they know it's time for bed. They're like, what are you doing up still? <laughs> Please, go to sleep. You want to come here? Okay, no, he just, he does not want to come here. He is just sitting there staring at me um so who are we raiding let's raid who is still up um oh we can raid what is hunt what is that is that a game Oh, a 
shooter game. I don't know if that's the vibe. Maybe we should go for more of the medieval vibe. We can raid into Danny. Danny's streaming Dungeons and Dragons. It's, you know, medieval Bavaria, Forgotten Realms. I'll take it. Um, yeah, let's raid into Danny. <clears throat> Uh, Forrest says, ironic, going to bed just as he wakes up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yes. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens next. Um, and hopefully that, you know, we didn't obviously send Casper to his death. And, you know, that we're going to recover from the PTSD of apparently losing a wife and child, which I didn't even know about. And I am this character. A lot of layers to uncover. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. Stick around for the raid. And we will see you next week. Take good care. Thank you.